So welcome to our informal presentation on the free Libre open source software ecosystem and how you can participate to make it better. To give you this informal presentation, I invited my friend Bruno Souza. Hi everyone. And uh, the two of us are members of the Open Source Initiative Education Working Group. My name is Fabio Kohn and we'd like you to help us to spread the word about open source and all the material we have here uh, is available on the web so you can download it, uh, adapt, extend, refine it and give your own lectures in your communities. Yeah, so we invite you to repeat this presentation uh, to everywhere you can to help uh, spread the open source and free software uh, message. So what we'll present today is the history of the open source movement, uh, why free and open source software is an interesting thing, uh, a little bit about the flaws organizations, the open source definition, the licenses, the communities, and how you can participate to make the movement even better. So let's start a little bit about the history of open source. Uh, in the early days of computing, in the beginning of uh, the software development industry, uh, that is during the years of the 1950s and 1960s, uh, almost all the software was distributed uh, with its source code, with little restrictions. At that time, most of the companies uh, used to make money uh, by selling hardware, so they didn't care very much about uh, the software. And open source software at that time was a common thing. In the 1970s, companies started to close their source and treat their code as an industrial secret. Uh, on the other hand, also in the 1970s, a lot of uh, big projects on open source development started to form, uh, and this became the basis of what we call today the free and open source software movement. Uh, for example, in 1973, uh, the Unix BSD is born. In 75, the Ingress database is born. In 78, the CNUF starts to work on the tech package. Um, but later, this thing got more organized when Richard Stallman, a programmer at the MIT AI lab, uh, started to observe a shift from a free Unix culture to a proprietary software culture in his working environment there at MIT. And then in around 83, 84, he leaves the MIT and creates the GNU project, proposing the creation of a new Unix implementation. And this new Unix implementation would be free and open, and uh, its first versions included the Emacs text editor, the X window system, the GCC compiler, the Tech uh, 2, and so on. In 1985, he founds the Free Software Foundation. And by 87, the Free Software Foundation was selling copies of the GNU uh, system for around $150 in magnetic tapes to get money for uh, the cause of free software. In 1989, he uh, established the ideas of copyleft and uh, wrote the first version of the uh, GPL. Uh, the, software, the free software definition, according to the Free Software Foundation, uh, is the following. Uh, free software is the software that provides four freedoms to the users, to software users. The freedom zero is the freedom to run the program for any purpose. Freedom one, to study how the program works and to change the program. And for making that happen, access to the source code is a precondition for this. So having the source is fundamental for that. The freedom number two is to redistribute copies so you can help your neighbor, so you can give copies of the software, the free software, to other people so they will also benefit from the software you are using. And the number three, the last one, is to distribute copies of your modified versions to others. So you give the whole community a chance to benefit from your changes. So the idea is that you get the software, you use it, you improve it, you modify it, and you uh, share these contributions with the entire community. So this is the four 
freedoms of software users. Um, this idea got a lot of momentum, and in 1991, Linus Torvalds develops his operating system and makes it available on the web. And in 92, the GNU Linux uh, operating system is born by combining the Linux kernel and the GNU project tools. Um, after that, and that around that time, and the first open source based companies start to appear. Like in 1989, Cygnus uh, is founded to support GNU products. In 1993, uh, Suzy. In 1995, Red Hat. So a lot of big companies that were formed around the Linux, GNU Linux uh, environment. Uh, in 1995, the MySQL database is created. In 1996, the KDE, KDE, KDE um, desktop system uh, is created. And in the end of the 1990s, the open source movement with this name is born. Uh, it's a new complementary terminology for the same movement. So we don't have two different mov movements. We have two different approaches to the same uh, story. So in 1997, Eric Raymond writes a seminal paper called The Cathedral and the Bazaar, where he reflects on the ecosystem of free software open source movement. And uh, inspired by this paper, in 1998, Netscape opens the source code of its Mozilla browser and tries to make an impact by opening the code of its browser. In 1998, Eric Raymond and others found the open source initiative, the OSI, with this goal of educating and promoting uh, open source software both in industry and academy, academy and in society in general. In 1999, a lot of uh, big companies start to announce that they are going to support uh, open source projects and operating systems like uh, GNU Linux. And these companies include Dell, HP, SGI. Uh, in the same year, the Ap Apache Foundation is formed. In the following year, uh, Suns opens the Star's office, creating the open office, uh, office suite. Uh, just after that, IBM announces an investment of $1 billion on the Linux operating system in the same year that Wikipedia is created. And the movement continued with a lot of momentum, a lot of attention, and more recently what we have uh, is ODF, the open document format, becoming an uh, OASIS standard and later an uh, ISO standard. Sun opening the Java Virtual Machine, the open JDK. Uh, more recently, Oracle by Sun, and with this movement, open office is donated to Apache, and a LibreOffice Libre branch is created. And what we see is even more investments on open source Java after that. So uh, in summary, what we saw in the last 10 years is a great impact of free and open source software in the industry. Now mainstream industry, the mainstream IT industry uses open source software for uh, the internet infrastructure, for cloud computing, for servers, for tools. It's very rare to find a company that doesn't use any open source uh, tool or piece of infrastructure. Uh, we see a lot of governments promoting and using open source software in countries like Brazil, Germany, USA, Malaysia, and so on. And uh, we see a widespread use of open source in society in general, helping to drive freedom, activism, promote knowledge sharing, for example, now uh, the Android operating system, is, which is an open source uh, system, is in the hands of hundreds of millions of people. So uh, why we believe that open source software is important? Software can be seen as knowledge, as a product, or as a tool or a platform for innovation and for business. 
And uh, now it's such an important thing in the modern society that having this huge platform for innovation closed and not available to everybody uh, is a big, could, could be a big problem for society. So it's something that's too important to be closed in the hand of a few companies or a few people. It should be shared knowledge among all the society. In this way, we believe that uh, open source software can maximize the benefits to society that this software produces nowadays. Um, we believe that it's an enabler for the society of the future. Uh, closed software brings problems to governments, to companies, to citizens uh, that open source can resolve. And uh, it can be a powerful platform for business. Um, we can provide uh, advantages for consumers and producers if everybody has access to the same common, common knowledge about a platform in which we build our innovation, we build our products. Uh, sharing becomes easier so we can compete in a more equal manner and advance science and technology together more effectively. Um, there are major, some major institutions around the FLOSS ecosystem and you can get in touch with any of them to help improve even more the, this kind of software. So the Open Source Initiative and the Free Software Foundation are two major institutions that we mentioned. Uh, the Software Freedom Law Center, for example, is a group of people that provides uh, legal support for free software projects. Uh, Creative Commons is a family of licenses for uh, opening and sharing other kinds of materials that, that are not software but are things like uh, artistic products or texts and images. Uh, we are trying to establish a competence center network. Uh, this would be a network, an international network of free and open source competence centers that would uh, permeate uh, the globe, including f physical locations to host these centers in which the communities around free and open source software would join and get together and do events, seminars, uh, education to develop software. And, and we already have these competence centers in 10 countries around the world nowadays, including Brazil, Germany, Italy, Spain, Japan, China, and so on. And they, they are all together in what we call the flossc.org uh, network. So if you visit the flossc.org website, you'll see all the competence centers uh, that exist nowadays, and maybe you will help to found a new competence center in your region and join this network. Um, we also have a lot of very important foundations that concentrate on the production of, of software. So some of the most important ones are the Mozilla Software Foundation that you all know, the Apache Software Foundation, and the Linux Software Foundation, the Eclipse uh, Foundation, and so on. So, all these foundations have great projects that you also can collaborate with and use their software. So uh, let me pass the word to Bruno and he will tell us a little source definition. Okay, so uh, talking a little bit about uh, the open source definition, when you talk about open source, uh, of course, uh, you know, you, you get a piece of software and we're going to talk about license in a minute, but you know, this software has a license that tells you what you can or what you can't do with the software. And, uh, and how do you know if this particular license actually promotes the freedoms of, that we're talking about here? So that's why uh, it was created, uh, the open source definition, that basically uh, is a set of points, of important points, that a, a, a software license has to, to um, to attend uh, to be considered an open source license. So, um, uh, so an open source license must, must offer those 
kind of freedoms here. So for, first of all, it must allow you to freely redistribute the software. Right? Uh, redistribution of the software is important, uh, not only uh, in its source code, but also in its binary, binary form, so you can have uh, everyone, everybody have an access to the software itself. And of course, the source code must be available. Uh, you must be able to, 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 to read and, and have access to the software in its source format so you can work with it. You know, just a binary, uh, uh, you know, just having access to the binary and being able to copy the binary is not enough. Uh, so you need the source code to actually uh, do something with that software. And then uh, once you have access to source code, you must be able to do uh, derived uh, 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 works out of it. So that means you must be able to get the source code, modify it, and create a different software based on that original uh, software. Um, the license also must uh, provide some integrity to the author source code. So, um, you know, being able to say who, who was the original creator of the software and maintain that information. Uh, one important thing is that you can't have any discrimination against uh, persons or group of persons. So you can't have a license that says, yes, this is f it's free for everyone that lives in the United States, for example. No, you can't do that. Or you say, oh, this software is free to everyone that believes in this or that believes on that. No, it, it, you can't discriminate against anyone. Oops. Okay. And uh, also, it, it can't discriminate against field of usage. That means you can't say this software is free if you use for non-military purpose, for example, right? That's a, one, that's a traditional one that we see a lot. Uh, you can't discriminate against, against field of, of, of use at all. Um, also, you know, you must, uh, the, the, the distribution, you know, you have, you have to have the license to distribute the, the software and it, sh it should not be uh, tied to some other form. So you don't have to sign an NDA, for example, so you, you, you have access to the source code. Uh, the license must not be specific to a product, right? You can't say, oh, this software is free software if you're using this product. No, if it is, it, you know, if it is an open source software, you can use anywhere you want. Uh, the license must not restrict other software. You can't say things like, okay, this, this software is open source if you don't bundle it with some, 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 this other software or if you don't put it on my competitor code. So you can't restrict other software. And it must be technology neutral, right? You, can't also, you also can't say that, you know, you have to use this particular technology uh, to have access to the software. So in all of this, uh, all of this the open source definition kind of shows you uh, what a license must comply with. So the software that that license covers is an open source software. But why are licenses even important, right? Why are we talking about license here? And the reason why we're talking about license is that, is that every time you, you write something, every time, you know, even if you do uh, write a text or do a drawing, every time you, do a, you create some work, this work is protected by what we call the copyright laws, right? So the copyright laws restrict what someone can or cannot do with some piece of, of creation. If there's not a license that allows you to actually do this, use this it, 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 it's in more ways or use it in unrestricted ways, then uh, you, know, you end up having a software that it's, you know, a lot of people just think that you can put a software on the web and say, oh, it's there, the source code is there, so it's free, right? It's not because the copyright laws, they don't require you to actually go there and, and say what you can do or cannot do. If you don't say what it is, then uh, automatically you have uh, some restrictions. So the licenses are important that you, you basically uh, make clear to everyone that they can have access to your source code, right? So, and the idea is that we have licenses, there are open source licenses, and that's the license that we, we want to promote. I think that the bottom line here is when you produce some software and you put it on the web, then you must clearly assign an open source license to it and do not reinvent the wheel. Pick an OSI approved license, there's a, a list of good licenses that are approved by OSI, and choose one of them that is more. Uh, suitable for your project, adopt it and make it clear that your software is distributed under that license. Right, because, because the other thing is a lot of people are trying to create new licenses to say, you know, use this particular license to, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm going to put some software open source, 
but I want to have this particular license. But there's a lot of licenses out there already that have been reviewed by the open source community. They are being uh, uh, heavily used by a lot of people. And so you should just kind of use one of those licenses instead of trying to become a lawyer, right? And there's three main types of license that we like to, to, to refer to. And one, the first license, the first type of license is what we call reciprocal license. It's one that requires, you know, that if you change the source code, you have to, re to redistribute under the same type of license, uh, under the same license. So there is a, uh, what we call reciprocal license because it has a reciprocity in it. You receive the source code under that license and when you distribute to your users, you have to offer them the same rights that the license um, uh, suggested you to begin, to begin with. There are other licenses that we call the partially reciprocal. Those are licenses that uh, they are usually file-based, so if you modify a specific file on the source code, then that specific file has to be uh, distributed under the same license, has to be reciprocal. But if there are other files associated with the software, then those other, soft, those other files can be licensed a different license. And then uh, what we call the academic license uh, are the licenses that are, that are very free, right? They don't, they don't require any reciprocity, and you can usually uh, distribute the software under any kind of license that you want after that. Uh, the most, uh, some of the most popular, uh, there's, there's, there's lots of licenses that are very uh, well used, have strong communities, uh, have a lot of source code under it. And so those are some of the most uh, important ones and widely used licenses. Uh, for the academic license, we have, for example, the Apache license. Um, that is, uh, uh, the Apache Foundation is a very strong uh, uh, community with, with millions of lines of source code available under the Apache license. There is a strong community around that license um, uh, that, you, that you can benefit from uh, source code in there. And the same thing as the BSD and the MIT license. Uh, the most uh, used reciprocal license is, uh, by, you know, is, is, the, is the GPL. It's one of the most used licenses worldwide. And uh, the GPL is a license where the Linux uh, kernel is distributed under um, software like uh, Emacs, for example, is also under the GPL. And a whole lot of uh, very, very important uh, open source software is distributed under the reciprocal uh, uh, GNU general public license. Uh, and then the we copy left or the, the partial reciprocal license that we mentioned, there are some very important ones. Uh, the Eclipse public license, EPL, is, has a very strong Eclipse is a strong project that, that permeates a lot of the development process. Uh, it's an it's a important uh, license. The LGPL is also, uh, it, it's, it's a license based on, on the GPL, and it's also uh, extremely well used. And the Mozilla public license, uh, there's a lot of derivatives around the Mozilla public license, and that's a, a, a very uh, well used license also. And so when you talk about open source, um, uh, our, our friend Simon Phipps has you know, uh, an idea of how the communities are distributed. And basically, you have the source code, right? What we call the free software commons. You know, all, the, all the source code um, is the center of uh, those extended communities. And around the, soft, the, 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 uh, the source code, there is a community of developers what we call the code developers. Those are people that are actually working on developing and expanding uh, uh, this, this core um, uh, free software, right? This core open source software. And then there is a, a community of extended uh, code developers. Those are usually uh, developers. They're not doing the development on the source code itself, but they are doing things like plugins and extensions um, and, and other aggregate software around that particular free software. Uh, there's also the, the deployer developer community. So there's a, a, a large number of people that are getting this, this software and they're actually um, doing modifications or, cha or changing how you deploy the software or creating install uh, uh, products around that software and helping getting this software deployed uh, easily um, everywhere. Right, and so, and, and in the end, as the largest of the, of the communities, the end user communities, it's just people that are actually uh, using the software. They're, they they may be installing it, 
but mostly they are using the software. So you see there that when you talk about uh, a free and open source uh, software, so, uh, open source software, uh, we're not talking about just the people that are developing around the software. There is a, there is a very large and extended community around the, this, this, this base. And everyone here can participate. So even if you're a user, right, you're just using a software, you can write documentation, you can write, you, you can have, uh, you, you, you can help people uh, use the software, you can do trainings, tutorials, you can do presentations like this one that we're doing. So, but of course, the closer you get to the source code, the more uh, sophisticated your participation is. So there are different styles of contributions that different people can give to open source software. So no matter what your skill levels are, there will be, for every software, there will be here uh, one of these layers in which you can fit in and contribute. Exactly. So that's, that makes you, you know, the whole, the whole idea of participation is, you know, you can find where you want to participate. And how, how you know, if you're going to participate, uh, one of the things that we, we always say to everyone is that if you want to participate on, on, open, on free and open source software, find a project that interests you, right? Find some project that, that you like. Uh, and there's a lot of places where you can look for software that you like. You know, you, you have, if you're looking for Java project, you have things like Java.net. Um, if you're if you're looking uh, for GNU project, there's Savannah. Um, you know, the Apache Software Foundation has a lot of interesting uh, open source software. You know, Ruby Forge list uh, has a, a, a very important list of um, free softwares. Right? Uh, you have uh, Google Code uh, that is also another interesting repository. Uh, even if you are a, a, a Microsoft developer, right? Uh, usually Microsoft is not associated to free and open source software, but there is a large uh, community of open source uh, software uh, that around Microsoft products also. And of course, one of the, the new block uh, on GitHub is um, one of the, today is, is one of the most used uh, repositories uh, for, for free and open source software. And you know, you can find software for any kind of language or product uh, in GitHub. So you have a lot of alternatives of place we can look for uh, to, for, for your software. And just, this is just a, uh, like a snapshot of all those repositories and you have an idea of how many projects and users uh, there are. There's a huge amount of users doing open source software today, uh, of uh, developers, uh, users, participants of the free and open source community. A large number of projects, thousands and thousands of developers. So you can also come here and participate and be part of this very, very important, very sophisticated uh, community. And a good place where you can come and meet people uh, that are participating in these communities is in some of the free and open source uh, events uh, that, are, that are happening uh, worldwide. So this is just some of, of the most important ones uh, we have in the U.S. Uh, we have OSCON that happens uh, in Portland, Oregon. Uh, it's a very uh, uh, important uh, uh, gathering of free and open source software developers. Um, in Europe, FOSDEN is an amazing uh, event, uh, very, very informal, happens inside a university, um, and it's, it's a, a, a place where uh, everyone that, from the open source, the free and open source communities uh, are represented there, so it's a great place to be. Uh, if you come to Brazil or Latin America, uh, we have FISLI, that's the free uh, uh, the the uh, the Forum International Software Livre, the free free uh, software international forum. It's uh, a very uh, interesting and it gathers developers from all over the world, but mostly from from Latin America, um, discussing uh, free and open source software. So how can you participate, right? So I think that uh, Eric Raymond wrote this book, The Cathedral in the Bazaar that it's available online. So you should, you should take a look. And he has a lot of interesting ideas on how you can uh, come and participate. But some of the most interesting ones is, you know, every good work of software to start by is scratching a developer's personal itch. So you can start here that a lot of the things around the free and open source software is all about you. So what is the thing that important to you? What are the things that you think need to be fixed? What are the things that you're, you're missing uh, when you use some software. So go find something you need, 
right? If you work on something you need, there's a big chance that other people also need the same thing that you do, right? So, you know, fix a bug that annoys you, uh, write some documentation that you think is lacking, solve a problem that you have, some, some good, uh, good ways that you can do this. Um, also, um, you know, it's, uh, again, it's all about you. So find a find problem that's interesting to you. A lot of people come to us and ask, you know, how do I find something that's interesting to work on? Well, first of all, think what's, what you think is interesting. Because when you find something that's interesting to you, then you're going to find an interesting problem that needs to be solved, right? So, you know, find something once that you want to do and something that, uh, that you're excited about. Because actually, nothing beats doing what you like. So the free and open source uh, software movement is a lot about doing the things that you think are important, doing the things that you think that you like, right? So, yes, it is all about you. It's, it's an interesting idea that you can do things that are good for you, and by doing that, you're going to actually make good things for, all, for, for everyone else. So how can you participate? Uh, you know, uh, Eric Raymond says that if you have the right attitude, uh, interesting problems will find you. So, you know, it will find you once you realize that you're doing this for your benefit, right? A lot of people say, oh, but why am I going to give software for free? It's actually, uh, it's, for, it's for your benefit. Right? Because you're, you're engaging with a much larger community that will make your software better. Right? So uh, it's actually open source software is, uh, is very good for you. Right? And you know, you're going to get involved because you want. And, and you, you need to understand how much this will improve your abilities. So it's all about you because when you look for, for interesting problems, interesting problems are going to find you. So come and participate because it's going to be uh, uh, an interesting ride for you. And another interesting thing is that, you know, good programmers know what to write and great programmers know what to rewrite. You know, to participate on, on, on the free and open source community is actually learning from others, learning what, what others are doing, learning how you can improve um, what others have done, learning how, how you can build on top of what others did instead of just starting from scratch every time. You know, and also more important than that is, is learning how uh, you can let others build on top of what you did, right? Not being like, oh, this is mine, no one else can touch. No, it's the other way around. It's actually involving people so they can improve uh, and they can, they can be uh, great developers because they started from a good software that you did, right? So open source software and free and open source software is not about the license themselves. It's all about being a great developer. So we invite you to come and be a great developer and invite your, your friends that are developers to also be great developers, participate in this community. So if you don't know very well how to start, there are small practical things you can do. The first one is to use open source software. So you can't learn something you don't use. So there's a lot of open source software for all different fields of Endeavor over there. And so start to use some open source software in a daily basis. And once you find a problem in the software that you are using, report it immediately. Uh, this will help you learn how the project works. And uh, you're trying to find on the source code why the problem exists. Look at the source code if you are a programmer and try to report not only the problem, but a possible solution for that problem. Uh, read a lot of source code. This is uh, rule number one of being a great developer. So if you read a lot of great code, you start to learn um, on the experience of other great programmers. So do that. And only open source gives you this possibility of reading and learning from the programming style of other programmers. Uh, join the mailing list and the forums of the projects that you are interested in. Um, you can also write documentation. For example, you are not a great programmer, but you are a great user of some software. You can write some documentation or a tutorial about that software. You can uh, give a presentation or record a, a movie of the presentation. You can uh, write a blog about a certain piece of software. Uh, you can teach others uh, to use the software. And by teaching others, you will see that you learn even more about uh, this project in particular. 
So spread the word, improve the word, promote open source to developers, um, make them understand that it's a natural way for developers to learn. And this will make them better developers and they will produce better code. Um, there are a lot of opportunities for you to promote open source ideas in other areas, in social activism, in privacy protection, e-govern applications and open data. Uh, you can have piracy versus copyright discussions. Why should I pirate that commercial uh, closed source software if there is an alternative open source that I can use legally and it's also a great piece of software? Um, talk to others about sharing knowledge and sharing knowledge in computer science and IT. Uh, open source is a great way to learn and also a great way to teach others about uh, software and computer science. So the future starts now and open source now currently is a mainstream way of developing software. Uh, it already reaches hundreds of millions of people and millions of developers across the globe and you can participate, you can help. Uh, you must choose your way and then start now. So if you want to find more information, you can see uh, all the references that we put in these slides. And you can also modify these slides, adding your name here and your email and giving these lectures to the people you know in the communities that you work with. Yes, basically, you know, this is, this is just a template of ideas on how to, to promote open source that you can follow. And, uh, and you can modify this. this. This is also an open source presentation. It's, it's released on the Creative Commons. So you can get this presentation, you can get this video, you can modify, you can, you know, you, you can add your own thoughts, you can add your own experience and present to more people so more and more developers uh, can, have, can benefit from the advantages of open source software. And if you have suggestions on how to improve these slides, please send, us, send the suggestions to us and we'll make a new release of the slides. Okay, thank you, see you. So thank you very much and enjoy uh, giving this presentation to others. Bye-bye. <laughs>